Hey, what's up? I'm Josh. Ayun just released their first ever headphone, and it's probably the best first headphone of any company I've ever seen. This thing is extremely competitive at the $300 price point that it comes in at. It's got some quality features and great sound quality that makes this not just a contender, but one of the top contenders for its price. This is a very good headphone, and I'm gonna talk about it. Whoever is sitting here making these decisions for Ayun needs a raise because right off the bat, they hit pretty much everything that I would look for in a headphone. It's comfortable, it's easy to drive, it has a common cable type, it doesn't make any major errors, it's got removable pads, it's got an adjustable headband. The material choice is plastic, but it feels sturdy and high quality and the tolerances of everything actually seem really great. There's a couple bits of metal that make it feel a little bit premium. The ear pads swivel and are ear shaped. This is just a really, really strong design uh, right off the rip for them. And I think that this is quite impressive. Now, the aesthetics of this might lead you to believe that this is a planar magnetic. This is kind of a grill type that typically you would associate with planars, but this is actually a 50 millimeter MLD dynamic driver. And not only are the pads tilted, but the driver itself within this chassis is also forward tilted pretty heavily. So you get kind of this forward push for the sound stage. That's kind of the goal, I think. This has a quite interesting yet pretty effective headband extension mechanism. Now, if you have an extremely small head where a lot of headphones don't fit. I don't think this one will fit either, but I think it should fit anywhere between the regular small and extra large size heads. It's pretty versatile for size. This is going to get compared a lot against the Sonara and the HC 600. And something to note about the interior of the ear pads is that they're actually quite a bit taller than that of the Sundara. It's also quite light at only about 350 grams, and it's really efficient at 28 ohms. And I think the sound pressure level is like 108 dB. So you can really run this off of everything. Now I happen to be using an Aeon amp because they sent that out for a review, but you really don't need one for this. So in terms of the visual design, there is a little bit of kind of what I would consider to be a mixture of pink and rose gold internally in the grill. In my opinion, this actually looks like a very mature headphone. It doesn't seem like cheesy or corny to me. Not everybody will like the color theme, but I actually think it looks pretty high quality in person. It actually looks visually better built than HD 600, HD 490. Uh, Sundara to me, it actually just looks higher quality. The one and only change I would make for this headphone in terms of build is I do wish that the cups would swivel all the way out so that you could lay this on the pads, even though you kind of can already, but I wish you could lay it flat on the pads. It would make storing it easier and the pads wear down a little bit more evenly. But other than that, in terms of critical errors that I would look for, they don't have any here. It fits most heads, it fits most ears, it's comfortable, it's lightweight, it doesn't get super hot. It uses a common cable type, it's got more swivel than something like a Sundara does, so it doesn't kind of have the fitment limitations that that headphone has. And there's tons of room inside the ear cup for your ear, so it doesn't have the pressure feeling that an HC 600 series has. So, kind of a, honestly, a banger right away. So compared to most other headphones, I think this does a good job of maintaining its own sound signature while also being competitive. So there's lots of stuff that ends up being very different and very like unique, but not all that competitive. And this is somewhere in between. It's unique for its sound, but it's also competitive for its sound. Now in the future, I might make separate dedicated videos about these two headphones, but a couple quick comparisons to things like 600 series and Sundara. If Sundara focuses on a brighter top end and kind of a cleaner neutral mid-range, and the 600 series focuses on more of a mid-range and less treble and less bass, this focuses less on top end like the Sundara and more on mid-range and bass response and kind of its own separate category. Now there are lots of headphones that do this like Fidelio X2, but that's got more of a V-shaped sound signature. This just sounds incredibly thick through the bass and the mid-range, but the top end is elusive and interesting and we'll talk about that in a second. Now bass is something that differentiates this a lot from headphones like Sundara. But it's actually weird because if you look at even things like Ayun's own posted frequency response graph, it actually doesn't look very strong. But when you compare it to other headphones like 600, like Sundara, it's got quite a bit thumpier bass than both of those. Now, if those are a 10 for cleanliness at their price range, this is more like a nine. It's clean, 
while not being like necessarily perfect, but no headphone at this price point is, but the impact of it is just substantially better for me. And maybe this is user to user, but I find this to be a much more bass forward headphone than either of those headphones. And actually, is very competent for most music's bass response. It just seems incredibly lush and well-rounded for bass. It does drop off a little bit towards the sub bass, but it's very rare that you hear this or feel this or notice this as a problem because it's very, I would say almost linear through most of the bass response where it just feels very impactful and full in most music you're listening to. And this actually continues through most of the mid range as well. It's got a very, very thick, almost meaty sounding, like just, a super kind of confident, thicker mid-range um, that a headphone like the Sundara might not have that much. The Sundara is gonna sound very clean, it's gonna sound very tonally neutral, but it's not going to sound very weighty behind the vocalists. They sound clear and concise, but not necessarily highly textured or uh, very kind of lush in their approach. And that's something that this does very well. And is closer to how the HC600 displays lower vocals and less like how the Sundara displays lower vocals. When it comes to upper vocals, this is where it differentiates itself from 600 and Sundara. Both of those are more forward in the upper range. So you get cleaner sounding vocalists from them, but they have compromises. So on both Sundara and 600, when you listen to a harsher vocalist or a more nasally vocalist, for example, you are really gonna pick up on that in the upper mid-range frequencies. It's really gonna come forward in a not so pleasing way. This, while being less technical, is much more forgiving and pleasing for those vocalists. And there really isn't a vocalist out there that I've heard that I, I kind of deem to be unpleasant as a result of the headphones characteristics and not the vocalist characteristics. So what am I saying here? Where does this actually land in terms of like vocal presentation. If you're looking for a vocalist to sound very fulfilled and solid and you listen to headphones like Sundara and feel like they're a bit thin, this is exactly what your headphone is gonna be. And I like the way that this is stancing itself to be sort of the antithesis to what is probably the most popular $300 headphone, the Hyphman Sundara. What it does is it sort of fills the gaps at what the Sundara was bad at. So everything that people would complain about the Sundara, I feel like this kind of picks up a lot of that slack, including things like the trouble response, which is a little bit dark. While the Sundara sounds incredibly clean and crisp and clear, this sounds that way just with a reduction in decibel output. That's kind of what it sounds like is just a darker overall trouble picture. So if you're thinking to yourself, the Sundara is perhaps a little bit too bright for me, this headphone is more where you should alter your uh, search towards, I think. But honestly, I find the characteristics of this to be actually quite endearing because it doesn't sound like somebody just put foam on the driver and called it a day to reduce the trouble response. It doesn't feel like that at all. It seems fairly well-tuned for its frequency choices, but more importantly, it sounds clear and unrestricted, just not super forward. So it's kind of, seemingly well controlled. But I know that some users will have a flip side to this or a flipped opinion to this where it's perhaps a little bit too dark. And if it's too dark for you, then I think Sundara is gonna be the right pick. Now, what's really interesting, and I don't know if this is a byproduct of the physical design attributes, having the driver so far away from your ears and so far forward tilted, but the sound saving capability of this is actually really, really good. And if there's enough feedback on this video, I might make a dedicated uh, video about its gaming potential because the sound saging and imaging potential of this headphone is awesome. Now, one of the byproducts for having such a full mid-range response, especially in the lower mid-range, is the vocals seem really big. Like all the voices seem very present in your head and they have a large vocal size and they don't sound thin or shrill or small in terms of physical size. They seem really, really fulfilled. And that was actually a pleasant surprise for this headphone. That makes it more competitive with 600 and kind of, in my opinion, beats a lot of the Sundara's characteristics for vocals. Sundara's are perhaps a little bit cleaner and maybe more timbre correct, but this is, I think, more engaging and more pleasing for most vocalists. Now, the rest of the sound staging, there is a slight reduction in kind of rear or like behind you type sound staging, so it's not as good for a full surround picture, but in terms of a forward representation and a side representation, despite a darker treble response, it's actually very fulfilled sounding for sound staging. Lately, I've finally had enough time to get a little bit of gaming in, and I've been killing bugs for democracy. Anyways, this headphone's great for that sort of game. Games that rely on directionality and cool sound characteristics, lots of bass impacts and deep rumbles, 
that type of stuff is really, really good for this. I don't know if it's the most precise for $300. I think that Sundara might be a little bit better for precision, but it's getting pretty close up there and definitely not something I would complain about. Okay, so some extra thoughts. Tamper characteristics are pretty on point with this. It is a little bit darker and kind of uh, less saturated for the treble instruments just because of the frequency forwardness. If you boost the frequency response with like an equalizer, you kind of get that back, but out of the box where it sits traditionally, it's not super, super great up there. Um, it's good, it's just not the best of 300. I really wanna hone down kind of the general gist of what you're gonna be hearing from this. Uh, Sundara has a focus on precision and clarity over most things, whereas the sound of this is less focused on precision, even though it's still there if you search for it, but it's almost about the weight of the music, like the weightiness of everything that you're listening to has more kind of intensity and I guess just general weight behind it. it. Feels more impactful in a lot of regions. Short of that though, my conclusion is that this thing is pretty awesome. It's definitely gonna have a frequency response similar to all the others that are going to be tailored to a specific person, but I think it fills a missing gap for this area for a weighty sound that isn't a V-shaped like bass treble mess like a lot of what's out there currently. Okay, Ayun, you did a great job. Uh, if you want to see more about this headphone, definitely let me know by liking the video, sharing it, commenting down below. That'll help on the YouTube algorithm. This video was early access on Patreon, and if you want early access to other videos like this one, join. Thanks.